Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. And also welcome back to the Linux Crash Course series on Learn Linux TV. In this series, I teach you guys how to use Linux to take over the world and spread Linux everywhere. Actually, that's not the point at all. But what I will do is teach you Linux and I do so in each episode within this series. And today's episode is all about the TR command. And according to its man page, the TR command can be used to translate or delete characters. And in this video, I'm going to give you examples of the TR command in action, and you'll understand its basic usage by the end of the video. But before we get into today's topic, I need to take a moment and mention the sponsor for today's video, Akamai Connected Cloud. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as Nextcloud, Rocket Chat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate, and it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. Thanks yet again to Akamai for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate it. Now with all of that out of the way, let's dive in and get started with the TR command. Okay, so the first thing that I want you guys to understand is that the TR command is most often used with other commands. Normally, when we have a command in Linux, we could use the command by itself or in combination with other commands. And I'm not saying that you can't use the TR command by itself, it's just that most of the time, it's going to be used in combination with other commands. And that's exactly how I'm going to show you its usage in today's video. In fact, I'll type the first example right now. So what I'll do is type echo, and then hello world. And I'm going to pipe that into, you guessed it, the TR command. And after that, I'll type two sets. Each of the sets will contain brackets. And don't worry, I'll be explaining this very shortly. So when I pressed enter, it printed hello world in all caps. But how exactly did that work? Well, first of all, the echo command was covered in another episode, but if you haven't seen that one yet, the echo command is used to print text onto the screen. In this case, I printed hello world. After that, I used the pipe symbol to take the output from the echo command and use it as input to the tr command. And then after the tr command, we need two sets of characters within brackets. Each set, again, contains brackets, as you see here. And what's going on is the first set is being replaced by the second set. Now, I've only typed two letters in each of the brackets, but what you're seeing is a range. So from A to Z in lowercase, and then from A to Z in uppercase. Now I mentioned that the first set will be replaced by the second set. So what we can glean from the command that I've typed here is that all lowercase characters will be replaced by their respective uppercase character. And that's why hello world printed in caps rather than how I typed it in the line above. This works because both sets are the same length. They contain characters A through Z. The only difference between these two sets is that one is uppercase, but it's still the same length. Also, you can switch up how the command is written while also receiving the same output. Now let's see another example. What I've done off camera is I've created a text file. And there's only one line of text in the file that contains a sentence that makes the claim that the channel has recently reached 300,000 subscribers. And that's true, it has. Thank you guys so much, I really, really appreciate it. But what exactly does this have to do with the TR command? Well, what we're going to do is use this text file in the next example. So I'll cut out the contents yet again, but instead of just simply printing the contents to the screen, I'm going to redirect the output into the tr command. And just like before, I'll type a lowercase a through z inside brackets, and then I'll type the same thing in uppercase. 
So I'll press enter. Let's see what happens. And as you could have probably guessed, it capitalized everything in the file. Actually, it was just the output because if I cut out the contents and I don't redirect it to anything, we can see that the file is completely unchanged. That might go without saying, but I just wanted to mention that. We could always create a new file with the output from the tr command if we wanted to, but the point is, we could also capitalize everything inside a text file as well, and capitalizing things isn't all the tr command is good for, it's just the current example, but as you can see, there's different variations of how to accomplish that. Now, similarly, we could type it a bit differently and get the same output. We could start off with the tr command, and again, I'll type the same exact thing right here for the set, and also for the second set. And then what I'll do is type a less than symbol, and what that's going to enable me to do is use the text file right here as input to the tr command. It's the same exact thing, just written differently. And as you can see, the output is identical. Now earlier I mentioned that you need to use the tr command with two sets of characters. Now that we've seen basic usage of tr, I can get a little bit more specific. Two sets are required if you want to replace one with another, but sometimes you might want to delete things as well. So for an example of that, let's change up the first command. This is the first command that we've used in this video right here. Now I'm going to warn you, this is not going to be a practical example at all, but this will illustrate how you delete characters with the tr command, so let's just go along with it. So to alter this command, what I'll do is remove the second set, and then as an option to the tr command, I'll type dash d, and what do you think is going to happen? You can pause the video right now if you want to try and guess what's going to happen. But anyway, I'll press enter and let's see the result. And by looking at the output here, we know that we are going to echo hello world to standard output, you know, the terminal. But instead of showing the result on the screen, we're redirecting the output into the tr command. And since we're using the dash d option, we're telling tr to delete something. And our set includes a range of lowercase characters from a to z. So in this case, what this example is going to do is remove every lowercase character within the output. And as you can see, that's exactly what it did. Again, not a practical example, but it did show you how to delete characters, so I guess it was effective. Now for the next example, we're going to delete characters again. So it's going to be similar to the previous example, but off camera, what I've done is I've created another text file. The one that I've created is usernames.txt. And inside this file, I have a list of usernames. But unfortunately, there's a typo on each line. Instead of a single T in localhost, I have two Ts in each line. So we should probably fix that. And I mentioned that we're going to be deleting characters, but what I'll do instead of using the dash D option is I'll use the dash S option. And what does that stand for? Well, it stands for squeeze, apparently. It's used to delete duplicate characters, but it's called squeeze. It's a long story. It's the dash S option, and it allows you to squeeze out duplicates, I guess. Anyway, let's just give it a shot. So to illustrate that, what I'll do is cut out the contents of that file yet again. And then I'll redirect it into, you guessed it, the tr command. And then I'll type dash S again, that stands for squeeze. And then in double quotes, what we'll do is type a character or something we want to remove duplicates of. I had duplicate T's in every line. So what this variation of the tr command should do for us is remove duplicate T's. Let's see what happens. And it did exactly that. So what I'm doing here is adding the dash S option to let tr know that my intent is to remove duplicates or repeating characters. After that, in quotes, I typed T. I wanted to remove repeating T's in the file, and that's exactly what it did. Now let's return back to the first example again. There's another way that we could type the same thing that I want to make sure you guys are aware of, so I'll recall that command now. But what I'll do is show you how to rewrite this same exact command a different way, and instead of typing A through Z, we can actually type colon, and then lower, and then another colon, and then here, we can again type colon, and then the word upper, and then another colon. And what this will do is the exact same thing. 
I just wanted to let you guys know that instead of calling A through Z like I did before, you could call colon lower colon or colon upper colon, which will do the exact same thing. Since there's more characters doing it this way, you might prefer the original example. It doesn't really matter how you do it, but if that's something that you wanted to do, now you have two different ways of doing it. Now for the next example, what I'll do is use the tr command to delete something. So again, I'll use dash d, and this time, and this time around, what I'll do is delete every alphabet character. We've already seen the dash d option in action, but I wanted to show you colon alpha colon as well. And as you can see, it stripped out all the alpha characters. Now I've shown you how to change case, you know, lowercase to uppercase. I've also showed you guys how to delete things as well. Next, let's take a look at an example where you want to replace something with something else, but they're not the same. So again, here's our message.txt file. So I'll redirect the output yet again into the tr command. And then in the double quotes right here, I'm going to search for a single character in this case. And I'll type an exclamation mark here. I want to replace the exclamation marks with something else. And then all I have to do is type what it is in particular that I want to replace that with. So what I'll do is replace it with a period. As you can see, it did exactly that. So we could use the tr command to replace something with something else if that's something that we want to do. And when it comes to basic usage of the tr command, that's essentially it. Now, of course, if we go to the man page for tr, we'll find that there's other options here. Not many additional options, but there's some additional things in there nonetheless. So if you wanted to read about the tr command in more detail, you could check out the man page. But I think basic usage should be enough for today's video, so mission complete. And there's our video. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the Linux Crash Course series. Just like all the other videos on this channel, I've had a ton of fun producing this content for you guys. So definitely subscribe to Learn Linux TV. There's other episodes in the series that are coming very soon. And by subscribing, you'll be the first to see those as soon as they're out. Anyway, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next episode.